So guys, you know, welcome to the set here for the Texas Insider Fishing Report. And, you know, one of the questions I often get asked, and I want to ask you two guys, as well as you, Bree, why don't you tell me, Chad, how you got the nickname Bam Bam and one of your favorite fish stories? Well, they kind of both correlate. So luckily I've got tons of fish stories. We could be here forever. But uh, so I was out at a floater rig, being a captain for a buddy of mine, on a 42 Bertram, Captain, Deckhan, all the above, so we're overnight fishing, and uh, we're catching yellowfin, good ye good yellowfin, 60, 80 pounds. Well, we finally get one over the boat, over 100 pounds, and it's going nuts all over the deck, just slapping everywhere, and, and I'm looking for the bat because the guy don't have the gaff, and it, we don't have, it's not in the cooler, and I'm worried about somebody getting hurt. And so one of his nephews was on the boat, and he wouldn't give me the bat, so I just jumped on top of it, and knocked it out in a little soft spot behind his head and it did the little death twitch and I kind of kind of liked it actually and uh, so 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 he, so he so he told me settle down bam bam and I thought you know what I need to name my boat that yeah. and so that's where I came from that's cute that's I never knew that it's a hundred pound yellowfin yeah Sounds like sushi in your mouth, right, Bree? That was good stuff. Mm -hmm. So, Bree, why don't you tell the guys one of your favorite stories? Um, well, it does have to do with the elephant as well. Uh -oh. My first elephant I ever caught on a sportsman adventure at Casa Vieja in Guatemala. Um, and I was, I, I hooked up and I couldn't believe it. We didn't know what it was until the very end. I mean, you, you did, but I wasn't sure, you know. I started doing the, the tuna circles. And it went around the motors, and one of the mates went down to... Grab the, the line. line and the line. What did he do? He did. I was so upset. I lost my first yellowfin tuna. It was uh, big, right? It was giant, like a 150. Oof. You know, big sickles on it like Ugh. this. Ugh. He I didn't put so on upset. the gloves. You know, and so he's trying to leader this fish, and so he pushes out and Bree steps back and doesn't tell Bree that, you know, she she's stepping back or to lean out over the boat. And the fish did the circle like this and got hung up in the right side of the Yamaha I hope, motoring. Gear. I hope my daughter doesn't oh. watch this because she did the same thing during a tournament. No, no. Oh, and yeah, it was a winning fish. Thing. So it, yeah, I feel oh, the pain. Man, All right. I was so sad. But then we caught another one. Yeah. And it was just as exciting. Oh, there yeah. I think I cried a little bit. 70 pounder. Yeah. Yeah, it's all right. So that's a big, good makeup fish. I think I forgave him this year for. This year. <laughs> this, year. <laughs> this year. He's only six years and <laughs> yeah. five years. It's gone. He's so what about you, man? My favorite fish story is uh, not a fish that I caught, but uh, a, a young kid on my boat. He was nine years old. We were actually out there crappie fishing one day, and he hooks a crappie, and this thing gets him all tangled up in the brush pile that we were fishing over. And he asked me if I could come help him catch the fish, maybe if we could get it out of the brush somehow. So, well, just, you know, kind of lower your rod, don't put so much pressure on it, you know, see if he'll kind of swim his way out of there. Well, about the time that I kind of helped him out to do that, this huge bass grabs a hold of this crappie and tries to eat the crappie. So now we're on a crappie rod. I've got a nine-year-old boy holding a crappie rod with eight-pound test on it, and we got this giant bass running out here, flopping everywhere, jumping around. And we managed to get this fish in the boat, and the screaming that took place after that, so we actually caught the crappie and the bass That's on a little so bitty cool. crappie hook. They were pinned together like this, gill to gill. That bass was just dragging that crappie everywhere. And I'll just never forget the look on that kid's face when we got the bass with the crappie in the boat. It was about a nine pound bass. It was huge. That's awesome. and, uh, oh, it was great. That's yeah. awesome. That was really cool. And that's it, never happened again? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. And, you know, the, it seems like the theme here, and this really wasn't planned, but we're sitting, certainly talking about monster fish. So in 1989, I was invited to go to Boston to fish commercially for the big bluefin tunas. And I went with a friend of mine, Ralph Delf. And so we get there and the fishing is really on fire. We're fishing in a bay between Gloucester and uh, Cape Cod, 85 feet of water. And we hook this giant bluefin. And the thing goes around five or six anchors, anchor lines from other guys that were there chumming. And then what they would do is they'd chum these blue fins and they'd get behind the boat and then they'd feed them a chunk and off to the races you'd go. So Ralph Delf grabs the rod as the fish eats and he starts backing off on the drag, hands me the rod. I get in the black magic harness and I run up to the front of the boat and we chase this fish around for 20 minutes. Sometimes the boat was on plane. 
you know, at 3,500 RPMs because he's dumping the spool. Every time he'd go around an anchor rope, we'd back the drag off even that much more so they wouldn't get cut on our anchor rope. They couldn't cut the line. We're using 50 pound test. So I'm winding as fast as I can for 20 minutes, cramping in my right arm. And the next thing I know, we get all that line back. I'm trying to wind it on level and get it all back. And the fish feels me. He's been out there on the surface, gassed, relaxing. And when he feels me, he takes off for the bottom and literally yanks me out of my top sider shoes. I'm going overboard because I'm locked in. And his son, Robbie, grabs me by the belt as I'm going over. And I hear Ralph screaming oh at me at the top of his lungs, back off on the drag, you dumb SOB. <laughs> so I back off on the drag. And, you know, we get close to the fish. I'm spent. I can't reel. I can't do anything. And you got a $30,000 fish on the line. So Ralph says, you want me to take over, Tiger? Because he's starting to do those those spins, you know, like Bree was talking about. And all I can worry about is allowing this 50-pound mono to touch the roof. So I said, yeah, Ralph, get in here. So Ralph gets in there. He goes, whirk, whirk. Sun throws the harpoon, darts the fish, and we catch the fish. And I'm thinking, about if all I know if I had to do, do two, <laughs> and I'd have had it all by myself. Well, anyway, 856-pound blue. Ooh, big one. Wow. It was nuts. But anyway. It's the theme here is certainly about our big fish. And, you know, I appreciate you guys coming into the studio. And, guys, if you want to hear more fish stories, you want to hear a lot of great tips, all you got to do is subscribe and make sure you keep tuning in to the Captain Rick Murphy YouTube channel.